going to try to help you win your world champion event so you can walk away with the Doom Caliber and the Swords of Revealing Light. Make sure you guys smash the love and crap out of that subscribe button so you guys don't miss out on more honest uh, content. So starting off over here, this was uh, something I saw about a week ago and I wanted to make a video on this. Um, the TCG player people, uh, Hanko Chow did a fantastic article talking about some other lists as well. So if you want to take a look at some of the info that they have posted over there, I would do so. But your expected meta for this event, for the World Championship, is going to be Tier 1, well, Fiendsmith's U-Bell is kind of projected to be the best deck in the room. I don't think anybody really is going to be arguing this right now. Um, you got to remember, um, this deck basically wants to be this super powerhouse. Um, you know, having its engine essentially at full power. I mean, look at this face. Look at this. Look at full power U-Bell getting the chance to resolve. You know, having all of your phantoms, all of these loops for you to be able to go through, it's it's kind of scary, actually. Second best deck in the room is actually kind of projected to be Fiendsmith Snake Eyes, which is actually kind of interesting to me because, you know, a lot of people are going into this World Championship event and they're like, oh, you know, like I wouldn't play Snake Eyes with a 10-foot pole. And I'm sitting here, I'm like, you know, I one Snake Eyes Ash, you know, with Flamberg is still enough to do what my deck needs to do, all right? Like, yeah, you're not really getting away with that. You know, you, you still have everything that you really need to be interacting with. So I, I, I definitely going to be shocked out here when people are like, oh my gosh, like, what in the world happened here? Yeah, you know what happened? People underestimated the meta. And then Tempai is supposed to be the third best deck in the room now. Any three of these is going to have a relatively strong matchup here and be able to do things. It's going to come down to, you know, your local meta and things like that. Now, your Tier 2 category, keep in mind, any of these Tier 2 options can, in fact, check the Tier 1. So, Tier 2, one of the best decks in the room, actually, is Memento Fiendsmith. So many people are expecting Memento to be this deck that's going to come out of nowhere for this event and is really going to catch people off guard because it has so much potential for its combo inboards and just the fact that the deck has so much power behind it. But with that being said, though, if people are going to kind of look around this and go, well, you know, like, I don't necessarily think I, yes, Memento is going to take you by surprise. Ritual Beast also still kind of has everything, too. You got to remember, this deck just came through in a format where we had everything at full power and was able to use Protoss and smash through the meta. So if you're underestimating the power of Protoss right now, uh, you're just going to be in an absolutely dogfire position out here. Underestimating Protoss in this environment is an absolute death sentence. Like, walking, talking floodgates that are able to shut out interaction from the opponent are, in fact, broken. All right, so make sure you're ready for that. Now, Labyrinth slash Labyrinth Fiendsmith. Uh, I could very easily see Labyrinth taking down some of these events relatively easily. Uh, your big thing with this is, especially like with the Fiendsmith combo, you know, you still have Beatrice for this format. You're still able to toggle through and, you know, transaction rollback set up. You know, whatever little side piece you're attempting to do is is kind of free. You also have the Fiendsmith Rescue Ace out here. Um, not really much of a change to this deck, honestly. You still have kind of everything that you were initially going with. You know, you have the full set four combo amongst all those end boards. That hasn't really changed. Voiceless Voice also in the exact same position that it formerly was in. You know, Voiceless is able to sell, set up Skull Guardian and all of this other craziness that this deck has formerly had going for it for such a while. Um, if you're underestimating Voiceless Voice right now, um, even though the deck does seem like it's kind of able to break, you know, boards relatively easily. Okay. Same thing out here with, you know, you have the Centurion board. You don't have King Calamity, which is a big oof, but you do have Infinite Cosmic Blazar Turbo. All right. And then, of course, Runic Stun. I think Runic Stun is definitely a sleeper for this event. Uh, you're just going to have to, you have to kind of navigate with one card demise with, you know, the one side piece, you know, the fountain that you're going to get. You're going to have to try to close out games 
a lot quicker to be able to maintain things. So that's a little bit more rough than I think you might initially be wanting to deal with. So there's that. Now, we're going to start off over here with U-Bell deck list. Uh, this was actually featured on this as kind of the the little help deck that you want to see. Now, you are still seeing, you are playing one of each of the U-Bells. This part doesn't really tend to change. Triple Spirit, though, might be something that people might try to optimize a little bit. Um, Spirit's definitely been floating around in some of the uh, the questionable numbers. You know, like, we've seen two floating around. I think that's fine. As long as you have Triple Nightmare Throne, you'll be able to do everything. You're also going to notice, hey, we are playing the Triple uh, Phantom down in the extra deck. Um might be able to get away with two. I think some people are going to have a pretty successful run out here with two of these. I'm not trying to take anything away from people, but I do wholeheartedly think that you are going to see some interesting little things, at least on the forefront of that. And then, of course, as long as your deck is able to use Blue Angel Tears post side deck, and you're able to do these <laughs> very stupid interactions with getting, you know, the different dimension ground, you know, the D barrier, the black goat laughs, whichever of these power side deck cards that you need to bring on in to be able to detour your opponent and put yourself into that game winning position, Ubel is gonna be able to do it so very easily. So I'm definitely I'm excited to see what we're going to get this, you know, deck to actually do out here and, you know, its category of power. Now, we do have a showcase here for Snake Eyes. Now, keep in mind, this list is actually missing the Flamber's Dragon. Um, thanks, Flamber's. I, I do appreciate you so gosh darn much out here. Um, the fact that they actually forgot to put the Flamber's Dragon on this is actually kind of hilarious to me, um, all things considered. But you got to know. This deck, one Snake Eyes Ash does not matter. All right. Ooh, but I've only got, you know, so many bonfires. Yeah, who cares? Your deck is still able to go through all of these crazy power ups that you need to be doing. Your end board, you still have Apo. You still have all this other stupidness along the way. That part hasn't changed. All right. You're still doing the, all of the craziness that you initially were doing. So, kind of. You know, keep that in mind as you're looking at Snake Eyes right now for this format and looking at the construction and going, okay, so this is what we need to adjust here. This is going to be the optimal choice to kind of make this happen and so forth. And, <laughs> okay, I think kind of is like a last hurrah for this deck out here for the World Championship. You know, if you've enjoyed Snake Eyes, this should be a pretty big no-brainer in my opinion to want to pick this up and have it, you know, do well. And then, of course, Tempai Dragons. Holy crap. This deck is the scariest thing in the room. You know, the Genrokus, you know, this build is kind of interesting because you're only playing the one Fadra, uh, which is actually kind of nice. Um, I, I, I do like multiple Fadra. Um, I think that two is probably the way you want to go. Uh, all real things considered, you know, you also, we don't have Fool Wars yet, so having the Mulcharmy, you know, in here is actually going to be really, really nice. You know, you want to make sure that you're going to get that advantage. You also do notice we are playing one of the spell card in here for the field spell to make sure that, you know, you can get the little extra excavation if your opponent's kind of set up this inconveniencing board. You know what I mean? Also, the rest of this deck is just hand traps. The only thing that you need this deck to do is connect and be able to push through a board. It is as simple as that. It is kind of crazy to me out here that you look at the way that this deck functions and you're like, oh, so I just need to be able to do this, this, and this, and then boom, that's uh, all you need to do. All right, you just connect on through and win the game. <laughs> Yay, Tempai shenanigans. Easy enough. Well, that is how, I hope this information actually tries to help you steer you in the right direction um, to decide, oh, hey, like, this is what we need to do. This is, like, the place to go. And the more optimized decision trees for those matchups and what you got to do. Leave a comment down below. Tell me what you guys think. I'll see your beautiful faces back in the day, guys. Peace. Patrons, thank you. Ah!
<laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Check out these other videos.